This video will review different mechanisms used by cells to control the translation of their genes into proteins. Why do cells need to control gene expression? For one, selectively choosing which genes to translate into protein cuts down on energy consumption. Remember that in eukaryotes, transcription, RNA processing, and translation all must occur for a protein product to be made. Controlling gene expression can cut down on how much cells must carry out these processes. Also, controlling the types of gene expressed and to what degree can help a cell adapt to a new environment or to specialize to a particular type. Gene regulation can occur at many stages in the process of going from DNA to protein. Transcriptional control is the most efficient form of gene regulation in terms of energy because it controls the very first process in the sequence. The cell uses gene regulatory proteins to exert transcriptional control. Gene regulatory proteins have certain structural patterns, or motifs, that allow them to bind to different DNA patterns. This allows them to turn genes on or off. The transcription factors that are necessary for RNA polymerase to bind to DNA are examples of gene regulatory proteins. Most of the time, many of these regulatory proteins must work together to achieve the desired function. RNA processing control involves modifications in the processing of transcribed mRNA. Alternative splicing, which is the production of protein variants using different combinations of exons, is one form of RNA processing and can be regulated. For example, the increased activity of certain activator regulatory proteins might favor the production of one variant over others. RNA processing control can also be exerted via the poly-A tail. Recall that the poly-A tail is involved in protecting the coding regions of mRNA from being degraded in the cytosol. So, the longer the tail, the longer the mRNA is able to survive in the cytosol, and the greater the amount of protein that can be translated. So, regulating poly-A tail length can have a significant impact on the amount of protein translated. RNA transport control involves controlling which mRNAs are sent from the nucleus to the cytosol to be translated. If there is an error in splicing, for example, the cell will prevent that mRNA from being exported by using nuclear degradation mechanisms. Control at the translation stage affects how much translation can proceed. One way this occurs is through the use of translation factors. These proteins are needed in order for translation to begin at the ribosomes, so altering their levels or their ability to bind to mRNA helps control how much or when a protein can be translated. The last way in which gene expression can be regulated is by controlling the activity of the protein products themselves. Protein cofactors may be needed for a protein to function or may allow proteins to function more effectively. Competitive and non-competitive inhibitors can significantly decrease the activity of enzymes. Also, phosphorylation can activate or deactivate proteins.